Crossroads Media. Yo, 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 before we break this all down, Coffee with Broads is back March 28th, which is opening day. Phillies baseball returns. Coffee with Broads returns. It's like heaven. I swear to God, you're not dead. You're not in heaven. This is real life, but it feels like heaven. All you need to do is join us here on the YouTube membership page. $4.99 a month. The information is down below in the description. You could join the Broads Media membership. It also gives you access to our Discord channel. That link is also provided in the description where we shoot the shit, we hang out, we talk nonstop over there when things happen live just because we want to chat it up as well, talk about coffee, you name it. So check it all out. I appreciate your love and enjoy the show. What is going on, everybody? Welcome on into Sports Talk with Broads. I got to be honest with you. I am so fascinated with this conversation, and there are so many layers to it. Before we even talk, is Justin Fields worth it? I feel we need to even break it down from a different level. My first question I have for you all is what is the role of a backup quarterback? Now, to be honest, I don't know where I fall yet. I honestly don't. You can make a legitimate argument that it makes sense to try and get Justin Fields. You could also make the argument that you're opening up a can of worms for no reason and you're applying some unnecessary pressure to Jalen Hurts and I can stand on that side as well even though I got plenty of rebuttals already that come to the top of my head like if he was the franchise quarterback you expect him to be, no sort of competition should make him crack. He should answer the bell, be magnificent, and respond to the guy who's breathing down his neck. That would be my automatic response, but I understand that you can't treat the quarterback position the same way as a defensive tackle, a defensive end, a cornerback, because whether you want to believe it or not, going all in and the message being sent from the top of the franchise all the way down to the bottom with one guy being it. Hey, he's it. There's no if, ands, or buts. There's no debating. There's no conversations. He's the guy. There is an importance to that. That's why this conversation intrigues me like no other. So what is the job of a backup quarterback? Is it to know the role? Is that what it's about? Now it depends on who your current starter is. Because if you have an Aaron Rodgers, let's say, Jordan Love is a very inexperienced young quarterback who is supposed to absorb all the information like a sponge. He's supposed to listen to Aaron Rodgers and watch the way that he goes about business so he could soak it in. And then once he gets the opportunity, he thrives because of all of those learning experiences, right? But that's not really the case that we have here in Philadelphia. Philadelphia. So it really doesn't apply to this dialogue today. So what is the role of a backup quarterback with a Jalen Hurts at 24, 25 years old after getting a massive contract and being told that he's our starter for the foreseeable future? I think it's someone like a Joe Flacco. It's someone, in theory, before we saw some of the ugly play from Gardner Minshew, but it's a Gardner Minshew. It's, hey, Jalen Hurts is going down for two or three weeks. We need somebody who can go out there, be professional, run an offense, and put us in a position where our offense looks competent, where we can score some points and go win us a football game. I do think from a general sense, that's what you should be looking for, and Rob, Mahdi of the Associated Press put this out last night that the Eagles were in talks with potentially going after a Joe Flacco, and that would make a lot of sense. There was a time where I thought that the backup quarterback, why are you wasting your time? But then obviously when I've been watching Howie Roseman go to work and you win a Super Bowl due to Nick Foles and you draft Jalen Hurts in the second round because you don't believe in Carson or you know the foundation was cracking and they saw some things behind the scenes that scared them and set off the alarm, so they definitely had to look to somewhat cover their ass by getting a different quarterback, you have to value it now. You just have to. We watched this team have a good record, 
They were fantastic. Jalen Hurts goes down. You just need to win a couple. And Gardner Minshew fails. Gardner Minshew not good enough. Now, here's Jalen Hurts who has to get back on the field, play for a final game. You don't want to put yourself into that predicament. So your backup quarterback does matter. And the job of the backup QB is to know the role, step in when needed, and to have some veteran leadership with this current roster as it's built today. So now I ask the question, what is the role of a general manager? Because the role of the general manager is to put the best 53 man on the field. That's what it is. Get the best guys, maximize your value, find great talent, sign good free agents, make special trades, get good draft picks. But it really comes down to when you study each position, did you do everything in your power to fill those said positions with the best player available? Get the best talent on the team, and that's how you sleep at night. That's the role of a general manager. Find good leadership, absolutely. Get good character guys, no doubt about it. Have the ones that are wired a certain way to go win a championship. Find your core four, like Lane, Brandon Graham, Jason Kelsey, Fletcher Cox. Absolutely. Put a good coaching staff together. Absolutely. That's what it's about. So then I ask, if you could find a first-round talent in Justin Fields for a sixth-round draft pick, a fifth-round draft pick, a third-day draft pick, isn't the job of a general manager to maximize that backup quarterback spot with the most intriguing ceiling, if so, especially for such a low draft pick? Isn't that the role of the GM? Yeah. It is, and that's why this gets a little murky, and it's all over the place. Look, I definitely tend to lean towards you don't do it. You don't do it because you know exactly what's going to be said the moment the Eagles have some inevitable adversity because you're going to face it through 17 games. And because of why they went and collapsed last season, which was just a big-time breakdown and a huge snowball that they couldn't unstop or couldn't unravel, or it kept unraveling, they couldn't stop it. Jeez, maybe I could learn how to speak. So if you lose two games and it's, uh uh-oh, are they going to lose a third? Hey, the Dallas Cowboys are the next opponent. You're going into Dallas. You struggle to beat them in Dallas. I'm just kind of making up storylines as we enter that potential third loss in a row. We have to win this game. But if Jalen Hurts is throwing two interceptions the week prior, it's going to be screaming fans for Justin. Now, they're screaming fans no matter who the backup quarterback is. So maybe you shouldn't worry about that. And also, should Howie Roseman be making decisions based off of what I think? Based off of what Bob from Center City feels? Because if you're worried that Jill from... South Jersey thinks that Justin Fields should start week five, and you're worried about that when trying to acquire the most talent for your team. That's silly. There's been people calling for every backup quarterback since I was birthed. Since 1995, Eagles fans have been obsessed with the backup quarterback position. So it's irrelevant if it's Justin Fields, Gardner Minshew. People were screaming for that dude, that clown, to step in and start 17 games as if that's really a difference maker. Of course it's not. So if they're going to go crazy and go nuts for someone as bad as Gardner Minshew, what will it be like for Justin Fields? And it is an interesting question, but you can't make your decisions based off of how the fans are going to react because I can make the argument, what if you don't go through a Jalen Hurts three-game losing streak at any point, and he goes and balls out, and he gets five touchdowns in one game, zero interceptions, and he throws for 380 yards. The guy's a magician, and everything goes well, and Justin Fields needs to play two games just due to maybe an ankle 
ankle, but you have such good separation in the NFC, in the NFC East as well. You're in that number one spot. Kellen Moore is sensational. The offense looks sexy, and you have Justin Fields who's able to be mobile, and he can run around, make plays, and you win a couple of games when Jalen's out. Then he returns for the playoffs. Bada bing, bada boom. You're in great shape, and then there was no controversy at all. That is a possibility as well. We can't think of the outlier that's just going to be upset no matter what that Justin Fields isn't playing because, well, they're never going to be satisfied, right? So there's a group of fans that would be calling for that, whether it's because they actually think Justin Fields is amazing or because they don't really believe in Jalen Hurts after last season. And I really believe that the coordinators is what held this team, well, not so much defensively, but offensively speaking, Nick Sirianni and Brian Johnson held Jalen Hurts back. And if Kellen Moore is great, and if Kellen Moore can work with Saquon Barkley and and have all these special players being great and dominant, I don't see a way that Jalen Hurts struggles. I can't see a way where Kellen Moore does a good job schematically and targets the other team's deficiencies. Hey, this team isn't good when running backs catch the ball out of the backfield. Okay, this week we are going to throw the football to Saquon Barkley. We will allow for him to be a monster. We're going to look for that and attack that deficiency nonstop. Hey, this team can't cover the middle of the field. Yo, Dallas Goddard, it's your night. Okay, yo, Dallas Goddard, we are going to carve the other team up and we are going to expose their flaw over the heart of the middle of the field. Get ready. Let's go to work. Yo, A.J. Brown, you know what's happening this week? You could target the other team's outside corners because they blow. Now it's A.J. Brown on a mission going for 180. That's right, 180 yards and two tutties. The versatility in this offense is nuts. And if Kellen Moore dissects the other team's problems, sees where the Eagles can match up and destroy them, in what world is Jalen Hurts not going to be able to succeed? So if Kellen Moore is strong, Jalen Hurts is strong. I don't see a world where Jalen lets down Kellen Moore and the whole offense fails to the point where we need Justin Fields to step in and save the day. So one of my third questions here that I lay out is in your eyes, is Justin Fields even good enough? Now, I don't believe that he is a franchise guy. I also don't think the Chicago Bears help him out at any point. And he also doesn't need to be a franchise guy here. But that's always going to be a question because of where he was drafted, because where he played his college ball, because of the name Justin Fields. There is a brand recognition there that isn't the same as as Tanner McKee stepping in as a pocket pass Now, I'm not worried about the stylistic thing, right? Because the ones that want Justin Fields say, well, stylistically, he could do what Hurts can do. I watched Nick Foles win a Super Bowl after Carson Wentz went down. I don't think Nick Foles and Carson Wentz play the same way at all. Is Justin Fields, if there's a traditional standard pocket passer who I think is better and more polished than Justin Fields, that helps the football team more than Justin Fields because he is projecty in my eyes. He's not a completed product. He's not a finished product. And you go through growing pains with him. He would probably fit better for a team that doesn't have a franchise quarterback right now. The Denver Broncos let go of Russell Wilson. Some teams are really searching. Do they go in the draft? Do they take a flyer on Justin Fields until they figure it out? It would make sense for a team like that who's in a weird draft position. They're not up at the top, so they can't go get that splashy guy. But you're living with, uh, I don't know, I'm just like thinking of the New England Patriots. You trade Mac Jones, you got Bailey Zappi. I don't even know who the Denver Broncos quarterbacks are right now. So let's take a look right here. The Denver Broncos quarterbacks. Let's go, Google. I ain't got time to play around. Denver Broncos QB. Their quarterback is, no, it's not Russell Wilson. Not Russell Wilson. It is not Russell Wilson. Stop lying to me, you jerk off. Denver Broncos quarterback depth, 2024. It shouldn't be so damn difficult. Jared Stidham, thank you. That's all I was asking for, you jerk off. Getting pissed off at Google over here. It's been a hell of a day. I'm running off of like three hours of sleep, so I apologize for that. 
Is Justin Fields good enough? I, I don't think so. I don't think he, maybe later on, but for the current position of the Eagles, does a project quarterback make sense? And I think it's unfair to even say this about Justin Fields, but it's all I have to go off of because, well, he spent his time in Chicago. When I watch him play, I just think he's a guy that runs around and tries to make play happen. But maybe that's because they have incompetent coaching. Maybe that's because, well, they finally got a receiver, and when they finally got a receiver, things change, DJ Moore and all. And, and, you know, there's definitely a difference between playing for Chicago and playing for an organization that has this level of offensive line. Saquon Barkley and Devontae Smith, and A.J. Brown, and Dallas Goddard, and Jalen, well, no, not Jalen Hurts, sorry, I apologize, that wouldn't make sense here, unless we go two quarterback system here on the field at the same time, hey, I know Kellen Moore is going to get creative, I don't think we're talking about that level of creativity, it really opens up a can of worms, is it fair for a franchise quarterback to go through that? And I don't know if we're just scarred because we went through the Carson Wentz experience and he was so fragile that he broke down. But you got to also remember that Jalen's been dealing with this for a while now, even dating back to his Alabama days with two. And with the, and then maybe that means, yeah, because that's how this sport works. That's how this sport goes. That's how everything happens in the sports competitive field. You are looking, if you're Alabama, to bring in a Tua, to bring in a good quarterback. Mac Jones was at Alabama. You always try and get great talent. That's your job as Nick Saban. That's your job as Howie Roseman. So part of the reasons why he's always dealt with this is because that's the nature of the position. And if you crack and if you break down because of it, well, then you're not the franchise quarterback that maybe we all thought you were. And that's where the 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 debate comes in. You should be able to look yourself in the mirror and realize I'm not getting beat. I will not get destroyed. No one is going to take my job. And I get that because when I started back in 2016 or so, I had a vision. And I actually just spoke with Mark Zumoff's class. Mark Zumoff does a class over at Temple, and he asked me to come in and speak, and it was awesome. And I can't thank all of them enough for listening to to my idiot self speak for about 40 minutes. So thank you for everyone who was uh, listening. But he read the first email that I ever sent him. And I remember packaging up some of my highlights that I had on YouTube at the time. And I sent it out to a lot of people in this industry. I wanted to get feedback. I wanted to learn. I wanted to try and get my foot in the door. I was trying to connect so I can create those relationships in the industry, right? And he read it out loud. And I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but it almost gave me goosebumps because back then I sent him an email saying, I know I could be great at this. I'm going to succeed. I know I have what it takes to get there. And now you see the journey. It's like, whoa, smack in the face of, wow, you know. But I I was so determined. I was not going to be stopped, right? And I'm still on that grind. I am not stopping. I, I had a taste of afternoon drive. I have that hunger to get there. And I think it's fascinating to look at it from that view because, The way I look at my craft and what I do every day is I have that drive, that purpose, and the way I attack every show is no one is going to beat me. Now, it doesn't make sense because I'm not putting my hand in the dirt and I'm not going up against a defensive lineman. I'm not targeting my callers as the guy I'm going up against. But in regards to putting together a good four-hour quality show, or in this case on Broads Media, a good quality 30 minutes of interacting with you at the end of the show with the Anytime Hotline, the first 20 minutes of the show— The way I approach it is no one will do it better. Now, maybe I fail for the day. Maybe there's a segment that stinks, and then I recover in the back half. I'm not perfect. I'm just like anybody else. But my mentality is I'm the best, and I'm going to be the best. If you're a quarterback, Jalen Hurts should have that mental makeup, and I believe he does. And if he does, then it shouldn't matter that Justin Fields is here because all of the outside noise 
all of the drama, all of that toxic talk that happens nonstop, which isn't our fault, by the way. These are reasonable, legitimate conversations to have because right now your backup quarterback is Tanner McKee. And while we liked his ability to pass a few times in the preseason, that is not the same as we need you week 15. You're playing a division rival. You're going to see Dallas on the road and you're fighting for the number one seed in the NFC. That is a tall ask for a Tanner McKee, and if you do go splurge on a running back and go pay him $13 million, maybe you don't have the same luxury of spending a bunch on a backup. Eight mil, nine mil, one year deal. Uh, you know, and look, they value backup quarterback more than most organizations do. So if they splurge on running back, they probably still value the backup quarterback more. And then another area gets hit. Maybe it's your safety depth. Maybe it's your linebacker play, right? There's going to be something that takes a hit when you do that. The cap number for Justin Fields, though, is in play for the Howie Roseman intrigue. And and, and I just think it's, it's, it is so interesting. Interesting. There's so many layers to it. And I, I know I sort of bounced around a little bit, but it is a strange one. And my gut says, even though I can give you every reason why it's foolish to feel this way, I think there's more arguments to be made to do it. More arguments to be made. The Carson Wentz thing, I don't think that Jalen Hurts breaks the same way that Carson did. But we did go through this a lot. And every time it creates some sort of tor- turmoil. It's the shrine of Nick Foles in the locker room with Carson. It's drafting Jalen when it comes to Carson Wentz. Now it's Jalen with somebody else. But, you know, it, 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 it's the nature. of the, If you're going to succeed, and, and, and this is what I don't like. Tom Brady didn't want Jimmy Garoppolo. So that's the best quarterback to ever live. And even he had a problem with competition at the position, even though it really wasn't competition. Tom Brady's the best quarterback to ever live. But in theory, the presence of Jimmy Garoppolo got everybody up tight, and that's not what you do to a franchise QB. But at the end of the day, Tom Brady just won. Tom Brady just won. That's all he did, win. And isn't that the end goal, is win? So whether he wanted him there, didn't want him there, what happened with Jimmy G? Tom Brady picked that football up, led the entire locker room, and just kept his unbelievable career going. That's it. That's all that happened. So whether Jimmy G was there or not, you know, Tom Brady's Tom Brady. Well, if Jalen Hurts is great, it shouldn't matter who's back there. Jalen Hurts is great. But I just feel it's something you don't do because it does create conversation. The moment he steps in the room. This isn't the same as Milton Williams trying to reach Fletcher Cox's role, right? Which will never happen. But someone who wants healthy competition in the room, I want to be a starting DT. I want to be a starting D end. I want to be a corner. Every position isn't weighed the same, and especially the quarterback position. I I don't think I'd do it, but I'll give you every reason why I think it makes sense to do it, which is why this doesn't make sense to me, and it's very fascinating in my own head because I can make more legitimate reasons to do it than not, but I feel you don't do it because you you, you sort of— and really, the reason why is because I think you need time for Justin Fields to figure this thing out to really be a polished pro, and that doesn't fit the timeline. So the reason why I probably lean towards not is less about the idea of Fields and the toxic stuff, even though it plays a role. It's more about, I just don't think Justin Fields is ready. He's got a lot more to learn. He needs to play. He needs to play. He needs to go out there, play 16, 17 games a year, and, and... and sort of be handed the ball and the keys to fail, to to have bumps and bruises, to learn. Is that what the Eagles need now as a current build? Or is it someone who can step in and win football games if Hurts was to go down? The, the only way there's more value to it is if Hurts was to go down for a long period of time. And then Justin, because the Gardner Minshews, even the Joe Flacco's, which was an incredible story, that's more... I look at it as, 
I need you for three games. Can you win two of those three games? That's traditionally the way I look at backup quarterback. But if Hurts was to go down and miss significant time and be out for the year or he goes down early, it sucks to even talk about, but that is a possibility in this crazy sport, then the Justin Fields thing, I would feel better than a Joe Flacco or a Gardner Minshew. And I guess... Here's the final part of it all. Before we get to Albert Breer, who said something on the Rich Eisen show that should set off some, hey, maybe there's some truth to it alarms. If that was to happen and you didn't get Justin Fields, there are other ways. Now, you could talk about maximizing your assets. If it takes a sixth round pick for Justin Fields right now or a day three pick, that's significantly cheaper than what you'd have to do when you're desperate. But there are other ways at that point to make calls, okay? Or you could be that team to get Justin Fields, wait for someone else to get injured, wait for that desperate team to pick up the phone. Now you flip a sixth-round pick for a second-round pick, first-round pick, whatever it is, because the other team is so desperate to get their hands on something better than what they have, which is what Albert Breer brings up. So let's take a listen here on... The Rich Eisen show about the reality of Justin Fields and his trade market. Think, but give me a team that might be willing to send, a, you know, a third day draft pick now for Eagles. for Russ. Really, Eagles? Come on, dude. I mean, I mean, would you do I it mean, if you're for Philly for, for Justin Fields for, for Fields for Fields? Yeah, would you Philly? Would you do it if you're Philly? Think about it. Why? Why would you do well, it for if you're Philly? If you're Philly, if you're Philly, right and. And Jalen Hurts incurs the amount of damage he does playing him the way that you do. And you're looking for somebody who could fit, like who, who, who could logically be next to him and fit. And somebody who, like, say, you know, say, and I'm not hoping this on anyone, but say Jalen Hurts turns an ankle in camp and Justin Fields starts the first month and he looks great in the offense that they built for Jalen Hurts. And now in October, somebody has an injury at quarterback and now you can flip him for a higher pick. Um, I don't think it's the worst idea in the world. When you're in such a win now spot like the Eagles are, you don't go and sign Saquon Barkley if if you aren't. Like, wouldn't it make sense to have that insurance? A guy oh, with the of amount course, of starting but I mean, who fits the uh, offense. So so basically, the you know the Bears would check a box that they get their guy offloaded, mm-hmm. but Fields wouldn't be a starter. So you're saying there's entirely a possible that Fields doesn't start this year. That some yeah that the best case scenario for him might be to back up somebody on a yeah, terrific team and I just don't know where the opening is. I think the supply in the quarterback market really hurt him here. Huh. Um, in that, like if you were one of these other teams, say you're the Raiders, right? And they got Luke Getzey, who was the coordinator in Chicago last year. And you say, okay, we can either have Gardner Minshew for whatever it was, 12 and a half million. Yep. Right. And we get him signed for two years. So we have two years of him or we trade a three and a six or a two and a seven for, um, for, for fields, what do you do? Okay, so I don't really care about what the Raiders do by any means. But, I mean, I, I, I would rather have Justin Fields than Gardner Minshew because I think the ceiling for Justin Fields is significantly higher. And, you know, second and seven, I, I don't know if it's going to cost a second and a seven. Uh, that wouldn't uh, be what I would do, but I'm just saying, uh, whatever. I don't care about what the Raiders do. The overall point is Albert Breer is locked in. And he knows how how he operates. He knows what he does. And this isn't out of the question. This is not out of the question at all. And then I ask you, is this something that would intrigue you? Is this something that you find value in? Or do you just want to stay away because of the controversy that it happens? And huh. I thought I leaned towards not wanting to do it, and I've said that multiple times, but I almost think talking myself into it throughout the show is what just occurred. But does it fit? See, it only fits if Hertz is down and out for the whole year, and you can't project that, right? You can't predict it. It just happens. So you have to have forward thinking. That's something that you have to prepare for just in case X, Y, and Z occurs. I accomplished my goal by trading a low pick and getting someone with a high ceiling and a high talent who was drafted at Ohio State. Mm. I don't know. 
I don't know. Which means I'm starting to shift the other way. Because I was, no, I don't think so. And now I'm, I don't know. So I'm not fully in the camp of, yes, I do it yet. If you made it this far. You know, you might exit it out 12 minutes in and then you think that I'm saying no. Well, no, I changed my mind. I'm now, I don't know. And maybe we come back to this conversation at another time. But this is sort of where I am today. And wow. Wow. It's always something, man. There's always something with this football team. Would I do it? I don't know. I don't know. What say you? Thank you all so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you for all the crazy love and support. And I will see you all on the next one.